Hello, once again, uh, we discuss about <coughs> naive Bayesian classifier. And as you know, we started our discussion with the naive Bayes uh, classifier, Thomas Bayes. And we, in, in last discussion, we also talked about, you know, how do we classify grasshopper and catibits. And uh, we talked about, uh, you know, its abdominal length and antenna length. And we talked about the histogram distribution and looking at a conditional probability, prior probability, posterior probability, you know, these are the distributions we already talked about. And we came to understanding that, yes, probability distribution really can help. Like what we did in this case, you see what, um, you remember the last discussion we had, we wanted to understand that if an insect, which is having three, um, you know, three centimeter, you know, three unit long antenna, to classify whether it is a catibid or a grasshopper. And we calculate actually, uh, you know, probability of class. This probability of class, like we calculate probability of class for grasshopper with the antenna unit length three and for catibid. So we find that roughly the value of uh, grasshopper is higher than the value of catibid. So if it is higher value, then we can come to a decision that this is actually grasshopper. It's not a catibid. So you understand that uh, this mathematical formulation we also review here. So we also do another calculation that for for grasshopper for seven unit length we calculate again. This is actually catibid is higher. So we can say that if it is a seven antenna length. 7 means it's actually catibid, it's not grasshopper. But same goes with antenna length 5, we can see that it is, it is a, you know, it's a fictitious decision because it's both are same. So how do you say which, whether it is a grasshopper or a catibid? We are at a junction, so it's very difficult to say whether it is a grasshopper or a catibid. So base classifier comes into the picture. When there is a visual intuition of a simple case, can be called idiot base or naive base or simple base, but they are all same names. We call it naive base classification. What we try to is uh, we try to find out the probability of previously unseen in a stance belonging to each class, and then simply pick the most probable class because we calculate the probability value. What probability? The conditional probability value. And the higher probability value is the ultimate decision. So Bayes classifier uses Bayes theorem. As you already know that we actually talked about in the last discussion, we talked about this conditional probability of uh, D over CJ and multiply by the conditional probability and it's actually prior probability. So probability of instance D being in the class CJ, that is what we are trying to compute. P D over C J indicates probability of generating in a stance D of class given class C J. We can imagine that being in class C J causes you to have a feature D with some probability, and then probability of occurrence of class C J. This is how we frequent the class C J in our database and probability of instance D occurring. So these are actually you do understand this is actually what we call prior probability, and this is a conditional probability of uh, CJ over D and you are actually measuring the conditional probability of D over CJ. So that's how actually base uh, classifier uh, suppose a given set of records are given and we, we our goal is to predict the class C based on the value of attributes. So what we try we try to find out the value of C that means we are talking about the value of C maximizing you can see maximizing the class value over different attributes. That means we have to calculate conditional probability of each over the class and finally find out which one is the most, which one is the highest. So let's go for a live example. So it's an indirect approach we can use Bayes theorem, but let's look at a live approach of naive Bayes classifier. How can we estimate this? We can measure it directly, but only if the training set samples every feature vector not practical. So we must assume the independence among this uh, you know attributes and we calculate their uh, values. I show you one example. Assume that we have two class. 
1 plus C1 is male and C2 is female. Now, we have a person whose sex we do not know, say Drew or D. How do we classify Drew or D as male or female is equivalent to asking, is it more probable that Drew is a male or female? That is, which is greater? Is it the conditional probability of male over Drew or conditional probability of female over Drew? Note, Drew can be a male or female name. You know, Drew Barrymore is very difficult to say. Drew Carey, we can understand that name, very difficult to predict. So, what we are trying here, if we calculate the probability, conditional probability, conditional probability of Drew over male class, what is the formulation is the probability of male Drew over, you know, probability of Drew over male and then probability of male over probability of Drew. So what is the probability of being called Drew given that you are a male? And what is the probability of being a male? This is the probability. And what is the probability of being named Drew? So we are actually having this formulation according to Bayes' theorem to calculate and we, we calculate both the conditional probability of female over Drew and conditional probability of male over Drew and which one is higher. We will go for that. So this is an officer, Drew, again, who arrested, you know, me and this officer, male or female. So we have a sample data set here. What we see name and sex here and what we see the names Drew, somewhere male, somewhere female. So we are actually going to calculate. We can use it, apply base rule to find out that what is the probability of this particular picture? So in this case, what we see here, you see, we are going to calculate uh, probability of male over Drew. So what we have is how many officer, you see what happens here. It's one over three, why? Because you can understand that how many female Drew you have, one, two, three, by how many male you have, it's a male Drew. So actually you are talking about the probability is one over three because three Drew, Drew male, and then, and all together actually you have three Drew, one male and two female. So it's actually one over three and over, all together you have total eight instance, you see, all together total eight instance and how many of them are Drew, you are talking about 3, 3 Drew, 3 over 8. And how many actually Drew over 8, 3 over 8, so it is 3 over 8 and 3 over 8, it's 1 over 3 is actually you can see likely to be 0 0.125 if it is a male. But looking at female, how many female you have in Drew, you see Drew, we have 1, 2, 2 female, so 2 female and how many female do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's 2 over 5. You can understand here. One, How many male? You had 3 male. And how many Drew male? 1 male. So 1 over 3 and it's 2 over 5 multiplied by how many? You can understand. We are talking about female now. So how many female? 5 over 8. And this is actually how many? You can understand. This is we are talking about the prior probability of Drew, so Drew is 3, right, 1, 2, 3, so it is 3 over 8. So it becomes 0. 0. 0.25, that means 0. 0.25 is higher than 0. 0.125, so it is clear that officer Drew is more likely to be female. So it makes sense, I'm sure it makes sense because you understand again, let me repeat again. So P of male over Drew, how you're finding out? You're looking for how many Drew, first of all, how many Drew you have, where you have male. So you see one, two, three Drew, where you have only one male. So one over three multiplied by how many Drew? Three over how many instance? Eight, three over eight. So all together this. And then again, how many female? over total female. This is actually how many male over total male, you see? So it's very clear now. 
All right, so Officer Jiu is a female, but you understand that, you know. It's 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 still a you know, question mark, right? All right, so so far we have considered the base classification. When we have one attribute or the name, but we may have many features, we do use all features. An example like this. You have different, now you have more than one features. So you really have to calculate all features, you know, conditional probability. So to simplify the task, name based theorem, assume attributes have independent distribution and thereby estimates, just multiply them. That means the probability of class CJ generating the instance, probability of class CJ generating the instance equal to the probability of class CJ generating the observed value of feature 1 multiplied by feature 2 multiplied by feature n. So all multiplication will result into ultimate values. In this case, what happens here, you see, naive based classifier assumes attributes have independent distributions. So since independent distribution, you can multiply them. All probability, you can multiply. So P officer drew CJ is P over. So what happens? You take every attribute. Since it is yes and then blue, so you are multiplying each value. So you see 2 over 5 into 3 over 5. Officer is blue eyed, 7, 170 centimeter tall and has long hair. So you are actually finding out for female and for male what is the value and which one is the higher. So the naked based classifier is often represented as a type of graph. Like you have CJ and you are actually having all this direction of the arrows indicates the state each class for certain features, certain probability. Naked base is fast and space efficient. Why? Because you are actually spending very less time. So what happens? You have a different classes here. And then male, female is very easy to calculate now. Long here, yes, no. How many? What is the value? These are actually the probability values you already have calculated. These are the class, yes, no. And this is over the, you know, attribute. So what happens? You are looking for uh, calculating. This is actually sex classification, however, you have long hair and male. Ultimately, your decision is whether it is a male and female. That is the final class. And this is yes, no. Ultimately, the value of uh, the at value of over the, you know, over the, you know, attributes. So, naive base is not sensitive to relevant features. We can have irrelevant features and still we can do the calculations. And it's very easy. So, take a look at here again, an obvious point. Two simple class problem, two class values are equally examples here. Like for example, it is a three class now. How we can have arbitrary number of classes? As I'm saying that naive base advantage is it's not binary class, it's actually more than two class. So you have animal, cat, dog, and pig, you are classifying based on mass, color, and you know where, what class it belongs. So what is the problem? The problem is that naive base assumes independence of feature. That means there is no dependence on features on each other. Otherwise, naive based classifier, you cannot apply. You have to consider them independent, then only you can multiply. But in some cases, consider the relationship between attributes. These two attributes, there is a relationship. And in that case, we really have to go for finding a solution through, you know, decision boundary we apply. Let, let's take a look at this example. How to estimate probabilities from data? Now, what we have this is a data set that we are quite familiar. We have these transactions, refund, marital status, taxable income, and email, yes, no, class. So we actually have a class P of C over N C over N. So what we calculate, first of all, we calculate the class probability of no and yes. No, how many? 7 over 10. We have total 10 in a stance. 7 of them is no, and P of yes is 3 over 10. Now for discrete attributes like for each attribute we talk about, AIJ is the number of instance of each having attribute by the, the total number of classes. For example, you can see P of status, status, if you do look marital status, we have single, married and divorced. So we have to calculate for each. P status married, what for no class? How many married you have is actually total number of no is seven. And how many of them are married? No, one, two, three, four. So it is four over seven. So like this, we actually calculate the probability of each of the attribute. Now, how to estimate probabilities from data? For continuous attribute, we have to discretize the range. We have to split the range into 
two-way split and then we have to use probability density function because probability calculation you cannot have a probability calculation for continuous value in that case you have to discretize and discretize helps you to calculate the probabilities from the data example of net base we start with a you know test example and know how to know its class here is a feature vector for example refund law married income marital status married income is 120k now what do we do first try out things like this we try to calculate if ibeth no ibeth no married income 120k we have to calculate the conditional probability and then next what do we do we need to maximize this value so we want to examine and compute the values like this we have to calculate i'm going to show you we need to compute the conditional probability of each status what is that ibeth no 7 over 10 ibeth yes you can understand this is 3 over 10 this is actually your ultimate yes no 7 and 3 we know ibeth is no ibeth is yes and then we calculate conditional probability of refund because we have a case given refund no ibeth no 4 over 7 refund no ibeth yes 3 over 3 marital status that is i am going to calculate each attributes conditional probability based on the ibeth class yes no okay fine after after that after that i have to find the class so now compute we are going to actually have a cumulative product you see cumulative product with the class values for both class test example both yes no no married income 120k for class ibeth no we have multiply this and for class if it is we get zero so which one is higher definitely definitely no is higher so clearly we would select no for the class value note that there not be actual probability of each class but you can understand that based on finding the conditional probability ultimately we are calculating this we are calculating this using bayes theorem to find the final class value based on a given probability So naive base classifier is one of the you know if one of the conditional probability is zero, then the entire expression of course becomes zero. That we have seen already. You see here, this is a zero means the other expressions are all zero. Any any of the probability zero means since you are multiplying it, the net result is zero. And we use the uh, Laplace estimate to improve things sometimes. So smoothing is a, a is a different topic, but still I am saying Laplace smoothing. using an aim estimate assumes each feature vector in probability you try to smooth it so that you don't get into and i'm skipping some of them um it's our main summary is that naive base uh, is very robust to isolated you know noise points robust to relevant attributes its independence assumption may not hold for some attributes and uh, we see more examples so uh, one of them examples is like this this example we have to estimate the conditional probability of x of i over the class this is the data that we have outlook for a, you know we have outlook temperature humidity so we calculate actually all conditional probability for different outlook values for different temperature for different humidity and for windy so finally i have actually you can see both positive and negative this p means positive n means negative the values are here and ultimately this positive and negative values we estimate and based on these estimates an unseen example is rain hot high falls what will be the decision so we simply multiply both the values and we find that x is classified n that means which one is higher what we see is the n is higher so if n is higher that is the decision so don't play all right so naive base classifier again you can see here another example of naive base classifier we have this is a data set and in this data set we have name given but can fly live in water have legs and what are the different class classes mammal and non mammal so what we do we calculate the conditional probability of each you know each of our you know i'm talking about the mammal and the non mammal classes all conditional probability we calculate and finally what we see it's an unknown instance and uh, for this unknown instance which one is higher what we see that 
this is higher than this, so it is a mammal. So we we can actually easily classify. Is that clear? So you understand that this one, we are actually calculating the probability value of, you can understand that we have attribute mammal and non-mammal. And attribute means A. So whatever attributes we have, we have one, two, three, you know, three, four attributes. So what we have, we calculate attribute of two because um, our decision will be based on uh, these four attributes. And ultimately, we are actually doing these calculations, finding the value that which one is higher, A of M, P of M, is higher than A of N, P of N, and ultimately it leads to memory. So please remember this, review this two again. This one and this, this tennis player, and then talking about the classification of mammal and non-mammal is very important. And ultimately, this is another, you know, data table. We can actually go for, you know, year, I'm 35 year old, I earn 40,000, my credit card is fair. Will he buy a computer? That's a decision. Because this is the data set. And you try to actually apply any base uh, classification to answer this. So this is the base theorem again coming into applying this. So these are kind of examples. The data sample describes age, income, student and credit. And this is an unknown sample. We, we need to classify it whether we take a decision or not. So what we do, we buy yes and buy no. We have this 15 instance, 9 and 5. And ultimately we calculate the conditional probability of each by yes, by no. And ultimately find out which one is the highest yeah and what we see is the yes is highest so the decision is ultimately this the second example you can see the same data table tennis data table you do calculate the conditional probability and this conditional probability leads to a value calculation and finally you come to a decision so this is a kind of, uh, this is a text expression. So base classification, statistical method for classification is supervised learning, of course. Assume an underlying probabilis probabilistic model, base theorem, can solve diagnostic and predictive problems, and it's very powerful. All right, so advantage and disadvantage of naive base. Advantage is fast to train, fast to classify, non-sensitive, handles real and discrete data. Disadvantage, assume independence of features. All right, so I hope we, we try to look back again all those exercises, especially I will pinpoint this one, one example. Take a look at these examples again and uh, come back to uh, further question and answer. But as you know, it's, it's very straightforward. How do you calculate and how do you simplify? Yeah, so practically try to review these exercises and make yourself very, very clear about applying the naive base classification in learning the classification. So enjoy uh, data mining.